Okay, so just a quick little video on bricks and the various types. So I've got a, a selection here just um, in front of me and uh, I'll start off uh, from the side and work my way up to the Imperial. Uh, this is uh, like a London brick and a London brick has got a frog in it and the face is the sand face. So during the process of this being um, in the kiln, this uh, surface is um, applied to it and uh, obviously burnt in the, the kiln with it. And uh, with it being, as you can see in there, a little bit dirty, but London brick, there are several, several different sorts uh, of facing that they do. And uh, mostly uh, you find these on a lot of housing estates nowadays. Um, because they, they were, well, just um, producing mass quantities, so ideal for the housing market. So with these, you can see you've got a really nice straight edge on these, so um, or sh straight arrows, I should say. And that just means that you can get away with um, using a joint nine, because you get a nice, uh, you, for a joint nine, you need a nice straight arrows. And so that is ideal for jointing up with a, with a nine. Same with um, a wire cut brick. I don't know if you can see that very well, um, but that's a, a wire cut. And you can see I've used these in uh, one or two little videos previously. Um, but a wire cut, they've got like a drag face on them, and the drag comes down. So that is the way that you should lay them, so that the like a weather board and on a fence really, and um, so you, you get the weather or the rain should run off. Um, if you lay them upside down, then obviously the moisture uh, collects in the, the grooves there. Um, but I will say that I did a repair job on a house that was built in the 70s with a buff um, weather cut brick. And uh, a lot of the bricks were laid upside down and they hadn't had no effects. Actually, you can see it better that side, can't you? Just the, the wire cut. Um, that had no effects of the weather on it, which really surprised me. But the only thing I will say is that if you do land the other way up, when the sun comes round, you get like dark shadows in the ones that are the wrong way up. So um, that does look pretty bad. So um, if the weather's not going to affect it, um, you are going to get a, a difference in uh, the visual effect of it. So always have them so that the rain does run off them and then we have a couple of um, slop mold bricks uh, these are both the same type of brick but just in a buff and a red and this is what I've been using in a lot of the videos and I, I can remember on the basic skills I did mention that these have a sharp arras which I always look to have as a face side because that side there in the mould always has a bit of a round on it so you don't get a very good uh, finish on your joint if you're using that way around so I always look for the side with the straight arrows to be the, the face um, with both of these because they've got straight arrows on them uh, joint nine is perfect these ones do tend to have a little bit of a variation on the arrows so uh, for these ones a joint nine isn't really good. I see a lot of people do it, but the, the joint nine really kind of wavers around with these um, irregular irregularities in the, the actual arras. And uh, that does um, make your joint nine go in deeper sometimes, and then it comes back to these. And, and so it could, you get different depths of um, joint nine on these ones. So I, I tend not to use a joint nine with them. Um, and I always look for um, a flush joint with these ones. Then we come to uh, a handmade, but this is still done in a machine, but you can see that the arises on these are um, very irregular. Ideal for indoor work on fireplaces and things like that. Uh, and again, you can't use a joint line on. These ones have frogs in them. Oh, I forgot to mention, these have frogs as well. And I think on one of the videos, you know what I say about the right and wrong way up on those. Uh, these bricks um, have the holes in them. 
as to we're going to talk about in a little while, the engineering bricks. And uh, they are again just so that the mortar goes in and gives a good key to the other courses. Right back to this handmade. Um, like I said, again, you get like a nice arras on one side, and on the other side, you get a bit of a round. Uh, when you're using these, uh, and these, all these bricks here, they do have uh, an option of what face to use. As I said, though, I do tend to go for the sharp arras as my first choice, but with this one, you can see that the sharp arras is on here, but I would um, lay that one. Again, you've got a sharp arras on there, but I would tend to turn this one around because I really do like that impression that you've got on there. So just a quick recap. We have the London brick. We have the wire cut brick. We have the slot moulds and we have a kind of, what I'll say, um, a handmade, but they're not, <clears throat> not really a handmade. These are still machined, but they're made to look like a handmade. Then we come to engineering bricks and semi-engineering bricks. These ones uh, are very, uh, I'd say, easy to lay if the conditions are right. If you've got wet conditions, your mortar's a bit too wet, and these haven't been covered up and they're a little bit wet, then these are an absolute nightmare. But if you're just in good conditions, um, the absorption of the moisture on these is very, very, very low. So you can get away, although we still don't do it, with a long bed with these ones because um, the mortar doesn't get absorbed um, into the brick so that the actual bed stays moist for quite a long time. Um, so let's see, you can get, if you do like the long bed, these ones will be awkward because they really do absorb the moisture quickly. This one doesn't absorb it as quick as a much denser brick. Uh, and again, these ones are pretty much in the same category as those for absorption. So uh, again, these bricks, ideal for a top of a garden wall, um, if they're laid this way around, obviously, and uh, for a damp course in the garden wall as well, because uh, the moisture um, won't penetrate through them. And then we come to the bricks that I've been using for the last few years, um, the imperial bricks. So an imperial brick, if I just will take if I just flush this up on the end and on the back, you can see how much bigger an imperial brick is compared to a metric brick. Uh, obviously these, being imperial, are what all the old buildings are made like. Um, and I'd have to do a double check, or someone could have a little check, um, with the metric bricks. Um, I would say that the London bricks, they started coming into being used um, quite predominantly in the 60s, uh, but they were around before that. So uh, anything sort of like up to the Second World War were being built um, with bricks like this. And uh, the jobs that I'm doing at the moment, um, we are using these like all the time. And they are, I think, 230 long. About 230 long by uh, 67, 68 mil um, in the height. But lovely to lay. And again, these are proper handmade. These are made in the traditional way. Right, just another couple of bricks to look at. If we just uh, measure, use this as a guide to see the difference in the size of this brick. So this is, um, you will see by the initials in here, this is uh, H.G. Matthews. Uh, these are based near Milton Keynes. And these are red rubbers. So what I'm going to be using these for are uh, for a flat arch where I'm going to obviously get to cut it and I'll get a, a whole brick slanted like that for a flat arch, which you will see in a video soon, I hope. <laughs> 
But again, you can just see the difference in size there. And I have a, a similar one, um, which again, I've got a few of these. And this is from, uh, that's a full wash there. You can see it's been marked up. Uh, this is from Bulmer Bricks. And again, this is uh, a red rubber um, used to um, uh, do arches with. Now, the reason they're called red rubbers is because when you um, cut these and put them into the arch, you're after a two millimeter joint. And to do that, every single face has to be cut and then rubbed to be perfectly flat and square to the other um, sides. So you're going to be cutting all the edges on this and then rubbing them down to get them perfect to um, fit into the arch. You'll see me doing that on um, the next couple of arches I'm going to do. So that's just a, a little chat on um, the different bricks. And um, I mentioned on one or two of them, there are um, the different types of jointing that you'd use on them. I will do videos a bit later on. Well, actually, to be honest, I have done a couple of videos, but um, the camera and the laptop um, didn't really agree with each other, so the videos didn't come out very well. So um, I'll, I shall redo them in the future. Um, but anyway, that's just a little, hopefully, uh, enlightened you a little bit on the different types of face bricks that are out there. Okay.